So welcome to another episode of the Positive Change Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Richard Harmer, and this is the first episode of Season 3. And as I shared on my last podcast, the Season 2, Episode 20, I wanted to try some different things with this podcast. So this is an experiment. In about five minutes' time, I'm about to run a 30 to 40-minute masterclass on the fundamentals of change, the process of change, and the psychological transition of change. I've run this particular masterclass four or five times in the last month alone. And this is an increase in how frequently I usually run this short workshop slash presentation for groups. And it highlights to me that there's a bunch of change going on right now. Maybe this podcast or maybe this particular content might be really interesting and supportive of change makers who are embarking upon in the middle of or trying to navigate themselves through that complexity of change and psychological transition. So if you're in the middle of change and you want a live masterclass workshop on the fundamentals of thriving during change, then this podcast is for you. See you back in a moment. Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Harmer, and you're about to discover new ways to go from overwhelm to thriving in your business and in your life by following your passions, pursuing your unique life purpose and stepping fully into your infinite potential. You deserve to live your best life, a life filled with all of the clarity, courage and commitment you need to be happy and to make a positive impact on the world. So get ready because this podcast challenges society's expectations for what it means to be successful in life and in business and invites you to grow beyond outdated assumptions for defining who you are. Welcome to the Positive Change Podcast. So welcome back to another episode of the Positive Change Podcast. And as I said, in a moment, we're about to start a workshop looking at change and transition and some of the fundamental elements of the change journey, both individually at a team level and at an organizational level. You'll notice within this particular episode, there may be some pauses, some beeps, some blocking out of company names or people. That's just how it is when you're doing live workshops and recording it for a podcast later. So if it feels a little disjointed at times, bear with me. This is just me editing things slightly so that I maintain the confidentiality of the particular participants and client that I'm working with in this particular workshop. So here we go. Welcome, everybody, to what will be a short and sharp heart workshop slash presentation with a chance for Q&A towards the end. Um, I wanted to start with a common question that um, if I had a dollar for every single time someone had asked me this question, I'll tell you what, I'd probably be spending a bunch of time on a beach. But uh, the key question people ask is why change? It's one of the first things that people ask, why are we changing? What, why change? What's a change? What are we trying to do with this change? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think this is a really important place to start because the answer to this question, why change, is incredibly important to know at the beginning of any change and to remind ourselves as we go through this change. Now, there are some specific reasons why within our context of the business we've got a lot of change going on. But at the most, the broadest level, the reason we change is to liberate new potential, to create new possibilities to activate new resources and options. And this is incredibly important for us to remember throughout change, because as we move through this change, we're in kind of the inverted comes the messy middle of change, where there's a lot of potential confusion and uncertainty and ambiguity and frustration, even some anger at times. It's really important to remind ourselves that the reason we started this journey is to unlock, to liberate, to create, to access new potential new opportunities for ourselves and for other people. And that's the reason why we're going through, not just the transaction we're working through right now, but at a broader level, our blueprints and some of what that means for us as a business is to unlock, to tap into, liberate and to create new potential. Now, at any point in time, in the middle of the change we're going through, we go, why are we doing this change? You got to come back and answer this question. Why are we changing? It's to liberate new potential. That's a key starting point to remember that most people, some people do, but most people won't go through change in order to be worse off. Most people will say yes to change, to go through any change because they think they're going to be better off as a result. And to remind ourselves that we'll be better off, we'll be 
uh, more resourced and more have more influence and impact once we've been through the change is important for us to remember. Now, in part of the pre-work for attending this particular session, there was an article by um, on the Bridges model of change that was first developed by William and Susan Bridges, look, in the 1990s. And I think it's a really good starting point when we think about the journey we're on because we're talking about change in the short term but in the longest sense of the where we're, we've got a blueprint and we're working through that and there's a lot of change within that process over the next few years so this particular model of change makes a distinction between change and psychological or emotional transition now change is an external event something we can observe like for example if i remove the pen lid from my pen here i've made a change in form the pen had a lid on it and now it doesn't uh, it's a pretty simple change obviously not nowhere near as complex as what we're dealing with ourselves right now but in essence a change is an external observable thing and actually change is can be pretty simple uh, a very simple example of that is we ran a senior manager workshop uh, six or eight weeks ago and we released announced a blueprint and and announced a framework with a bunch of priorities and some goals and there's a change it's happened but cyclical transition, how people feel about that change takes time. People's willingness to accept it, to get on board with it, to work through it, to understand it and agree with it, that takes more time to go through. So the Bridges model of change is really useful in that sense because it makes a distinction and really focuses on, focuses on the transition side of change. Over time, a change is occurring and as we're more move through an organization, the psychological transition we go through, this bit in the middle here was often called the neutral zone. I like to refer to it sometimes as the messy middle because there's a bunch of things changing. The time taken through this middle zone here can change a lot depending upon where you are in an organization. So for example, if I'm the board, the CEO, the executive team, you know, more senior in the organization, including yourselves, the transition from the old world, what is no longer staying to the new world, can sometimes take a relatively short period of time because we've got more control, we've had some choices, we've been involved in the decision-making process as we go through that change. As we move through the organization, it becomes harder to move through. So I wanna dive into what happens in the middle, but before I get there, I wanna talk really briefly about the three phases. There's three phases in any change. Any change begins with an end. That is the end of current reality, the end of what we currently understand to be the way things are around here. All change begins with an end, endings. That Those endings, the trigger or the recognition that things are ending will, when we experience that, will determine, be dependent upon where we are in the organization. The more senior, we probably already know there's a bunch of things ending, then as we start to move through this change, we have what's called the neutral zone, this change, this phase in the middle where um, we move to a bunch of activities around us changing. And I'm gonna dive into those as we get, work through this particular presentation. And then we get to the new beginning, the next chapter, the new beginning where there's a sense of commitment and clarity and, and hope and acceptance about what the change is going to be. What's really interesting here and why I think this model is, is interesting is as we're in the, say, the middle of the organization, oftentimes, and this may be what you're experiencing, the transition, the emotional change from confusion to acceptance of what's occurring sometimes can take longer. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Each and every one of you have invested a lot of your time and energy in creating the current business. We've had significant success in creating a business that is highly um, uh, connected, engaging, valuable. And what is being asked of you, in essence, is to change that. Like, why would you want to change something you spend a bunch of time creating? Well, again, the reason for change is to liberate new potential. We're, we're changing it to get more potential, to have more opportunity for ourselves. But you can see here in the middle, this sort of neutral zone, the gap between letting go and creating a new gets broader the more in the middle of the organization we are, oftentimes because we have a lot invested in keeping things the same. We created them. 
we're trying to manage them. We're trying to run them efficiently as possible. And you're saying we're going to create something different, which is going to create confusion and ambiguity and a, ma- a lack of alignment and a whole bunch of stuff. So this transition in the middle can often take longer, and it's important to recognize that that may be what you're experiencing right now. And then we get the new beginnings. That in each of these phases, different things are occurring. And I'm going to start with this part with endings. In the endings phase, where we the, a change is announced and we all understand that it's going to affect us in some way, two things occur nearly, nearly immediately. And what I'd like you to do is, is to think about how you may already be noticing these things for yourself or for some of your people. Two things occur immediately when change is announced. The first thing to occur is there's an increase in fear. People become scared because they're not sure what's going to happen. So you may be experiencing this, but also some of your people might be. And fear is usually more heightened in the middle of the organization. The second thing that occurs is trust, usually of the executive or management or senior managers, goes down. Fear goes up, trust goes down. The reason for that is that we don't know what's going to happen and we're not sure whether we're going to be looked after. They're the two most common emotions that happen nearly immediately. And they're inevitable. Any change, whether it be a personal change, whether it be a team change, an organizational change, a family change, whatever it might be, as soon as change is announced, we start to, we're, we're going to experience some fear. And we're going to have a reduction in trust. They're the two things that tend to occur. Now, what's really fascinating about this, these two things here, for us as, as managers and leaders of the business is that fear is what's called a future-focused emotion. It's looking to the future, looking to what hasn't happened yet and not understanding or not liking what we see. Often we're looking to the future and we, don't, we, we can't see what clarity, we can't see what the future is going to hold for us. We're not sure and we become feared or fear, fearful or scared about that. And as leaders and managers of our people, we have an incredibly important role to alleviate fear when it happens and when it's possible. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do that in this new beginnings. In essence, it's about trying to to create as much clarity as possible about what's going to happen and where we're heading. You know, having a light on the hill or a target. And we have one of those around the change we're working through now in order to alleviate fear. Trust tends to go down. Typically of the uh, management of, or executives I've shared, mostly because people are not sure, will they look after me? Will I be okay? Have they got my best interests in mind? Will they do what they say? And so on and so forth. So trust tends to be compromised during change. Now, this is usually trust of other people. But what's important here for us to recognize is we want to try and um, build personal or what's called internal trust. And in psychology or in, in um, uh, building uh, emotional resilience, a particular tool we use for approaching is what's called self-efficacy. Now, self-efficacy is a belief that I can do whatever I set out to accomplish. If I think I can do it, I can do it. Now, many of you will have a high level of self-efficacy about the job you do. You know, if I decide I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I know how to do that. And that's an indication we have self-efficacy within that particular focus. What we need to do is build self-efficacy within the fo- with the focus of change. Because this, that sense that I can, set out, I can do what I set out to accomplish is, is contextually or domain specific. Now, how do we build trust? How do we build that sense of I can do anything this? We do, with our people, we, we have conversations of three types. The first is we ask them to remember they've been through a lot of change before, they've been successful, and they've learned from it. It was not the first time we've gone through change as a business. We've been through change before, and if we can remind people we've been here before, we know what to do, and how did you do it, then we're building what's called self-mastery for change. The second thing we could do is what's called build what's called social or role model mastery. We can look to other people who've done it really well, either within the business or other teams in the business or other organizations. We say, look, 
they did change successfully. What did they do? How did we copy it? It's role modeling or copying exemplars or people that have done it really well and reminding ourselves if we just do what they did, we'll be okay as well. The third thing we can do to build trust in ourselves and in each other is to get positive reinforcement that we're doing well and we're on the way. It's being reminded that we know what we're doing by other people. So our role as managers and leaders here is to remind ourselves and to remind each other that we're being successful, we're making it, we're making progress, we're further along than we were a month ago or two months ago, and to remind ourselves that we're that we're that we know what we're doing. Because in the messy middle, that can get confusing. Right? So here's the thing: when fear comes up, we alleviate fear by creating clarity of the future. When trust is compromised, we alleviate that by reminding people that they've been through change before and what to do about it and how they've done it. Two, providing examples across the business or across our industry where people have been successful in change and telling people how they did it so we can do the same thing. And three, we can reinforce with each other that we're making change, we're on progress, we're not starting, we're on the journey, we're halfway there, we're partway there, we're making progress and we're doing well affirming what's working. Let me talk about the other side of this. So that in the phase one, it's all about endings and it's often about frustration, anger, disappointment, fear, lack of trust. The other side, this new beginnings, this next chapter, this new phase of uh, the change is often identified or experienced as um, clarity, comfort, flow, an openness to learn new things, a commitment to try things you haven't done before, a high level of connection and engagement and trust in each other and in ourselves that we can make it, okay? Now, there are three key things that we already have and are already working on that will help us be successful in the next phase, this next chapter, okay? We have a target, which I'm going to talk to in a moment. We have a focus. And we have a bunch of drivers or accelerators of our success that are already in place that we can leverage. Now, these three things, which I'm going to outline in just a moment, are incredibly important, target, focus, and drivers, because they do a really important thing. They help to alleviate or overcome people's fear or apprehension or worry about whether they're going to be okay, because we're providing clarity. And second, when we help them to connect with, this is how you're already doing these three things, we're going to build trust of each other. Let, okay, I'll be fine because I know what I'm doing already. So this is what we're working on here. In our new beginning, our target is really focused on building and driving our business excellence priority. So we do have a target. We have three key goals that everybody knows because we've been through our blueprint conversations and we have some priorities for the short term. And one of those priorities is building our business excellence, building out the priority. Now the target here, what we're trying to do aligns with delivering sustained customer value. That's why we're trying to build business excellence. Our focus, the thing that we actually have that will help us do that, that target is our blueprint. It's really clearly defined. So although we don't know, for example, exactly what the outcomes are going to be when a few the votes and decisions happening to the business, even though we don't know that and what, what the actual eventuality is, we have a pretty good idea because we've had many conversations with leadership that that means that there'll probably be some changes. But what we do know is it doesn't really matter what those changes are, that's always going to stay the same. In every bit of our business, regardless of what is going on, that doesn't change. And we do that because we have a blueprint that helps us know what our work is. So even though we're going through a bunch of change, these things stay the same. Now, what's really important here um, is we have such a massive opportunity come ahead of us. We get to, We get to move from playing a very, very important role on the Australian stage to playing an even more important role on the global stage. And 
there was some research a few years ago by um, a, a consulting firm that looked at what are the fundamental drivers and accelerators of business success of those organisations that are globally orientated. And what's um, really uh, refreshing here is that we have many of these factors in place already. So these are the other things that we need to be focused on in what are we trying to create in this future? Well, there are six factors. The first three are all about driving business performance, and the second three are all about accelerating performance. The first three are this. Globally successful businesses who have strong, sustained business performance have the following three things. An aligned company strategy and aligned purpose, where every single member of the organisation knows what we stand for, what our vision is, how, uh, what our competitive advantage is, what our goals are, and what our short and longer term priorities are. We have alignment to a strategy. Now, of course, we can always do more in this space, but I would suggest that we can put a tick next to that, that we're well on our way in having alignment around purpose and strategy. The second thing we have is highly capable people with the right talent, the right processes, and the right tools to drive that strategy. So we have great people who know what they're doing with good experience, with the right resources, the right tools, the right processes to drive the strategy. Now, of course, we can continue to do business excellence on this front, but I think we've got a, we can put a tick next to this one as well, because we have some great processes that we're, we, we're, we're effective and running well, and yes, we can do more, and yes, we'll definitely need to do more, but we're not coming from um, a low base, we're coming from a strong base in this one. The third thing that, that really helps drive business performance is effective decision making done at the right level at the right time. So the right people in the right room at the right time making the right decisions for the right result. Now, I think we have some work to do in this space here as a business. And that leads us to the accelerator. The things that, if we had those in place, help those three things of alignment, capability, and effective decision-making go even faster. And they're the following. Um, we have adaptive, an ability to flex and change and experiment and innovate and um, try new things in order to maintain progress. The ability to not get stuck, basically. So adaptable people and adaptable processes. Second, high levels of efficiency, where the... Um, we're able to get the benefits of scale without having wasted effort or wasted time. Again, our, our business excellence priority is really trying to capitalise on that one to help us go faster. And the final thing is inspired and engaged people with a can-do attitude that are willing to go the extra mile to make things happen. So this is the new beginning. Now, this sense of here's a target, our focus in making that happen is our blueprint, and our drivers are aligned, alignment to strategy, capable people and processes and effective decision making, adaptability, efficiency, and inspired and motivated people. So that brings us to what's ending and where we're heading. So we have some clarity about that. Now, what we need to work on is what's happening in the middle. Hi, and thank you so much for checking out another episode of the Positive Change Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit subscribe using the button below and make sure you also click the bell icon to get notified every time we release a new episode. If you're looking for the show notes for this episode, we have them in the link underneath, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and other offers that we drop from time to time to help you go from overwhelmed to thriving in pursuing your best life. So go ahead and check out this episode's show notes if you're interested. And thank you so much for tuning into the Positive Change Podcast.